This has been such a gift to movie lovers and a gift to New York for all these years. And uh, I think even Jane would say when she started, she couldn't have imagined that it would have become what it has. I'm very grateful. The movie you're about to see, Bridegroom, which originally was sort of a phenom on YouTube, as you will see when you see what Shane did on his own. And he said, I want you to watch it and tell me what you think. So I watched it, and I was totally blown away. And since he asked me what I thought, I told him. And I took all these detailed notes, and I said, this is fabulous. I think you should do one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm a frustrated movie editor. And um, we had all these talks, so then Linda worked on it some more, and they said, we want to show it at Tribeca. And I called Jane, and I said, I saw this movie, and America needs to see the consequences of a world in which gay people who love each other are accepted and the consequences of one in which they are not accepted in the same movie, in the inner family dynamics of the couple. It is a portrait of America, a portrait of generational change, and an illustration of the fact that almost everybody's attitude about gay marriage and relationships in general that is negative is more a function of how they view themselves and their own identity than their concern about the people involved. If you are other directed, you can't be opposed to people who love each other, spending their lives together, and if they want legal sanction for it, having it, and then having the same rights everybody else does. If your identity is all caught up in whether everybody else should be exactly like you, then you may wind up being in opposition to it. But as you will see from the film, an awful lot of pain and wreckage can ensue. And I was very influenced several years ago when a Mexican physician turned philosopher named Don Miguel Ruiz wrote a book called The Four Agreements, which some of you may have read. I was interested in it because he's a Toltec, and his grandfather was a Toltec shaman, and the Toltec Empire basically stood atop the Aztec Empire and came all the way into my native state of Arkansas. So we have a mound there where they celebrated weddings and funerals and things. And he said, you have to make and keep four agreements with yourself if you ever want to be happy. And one of them was to realize that if somebody says something to you really hateful, even if it's true, they didn't say it because it's true. They said it because they needed to. And you must find your way in life by listening to criticism and praise, but realizing it comes out of where people are about themselves, not where you are and what your life is. That's a lot of the psychodynamics behind the struggle for equality for the LGBT community and for the issue of gay marriage. This is really, on one level, a wonderful, sad, heartbreaking, yet exhilarating and life-affirming story. And on another level, it's a story about our nation's struggle to make one more step in forming a more perfect union, for which the marriage is both the symbol and the substance. So I hope you enjoy it as much as I did. Thank you.